got some amazing new numbers that rolled in this week about uh, Republican registration during the Biden era. So take a look at this from Axios here. This says quite a bit. Charted GOP surged as Biden slumped. Percentage of Americans who identify with or lean to the Republican or Democratic Party. You could see there in uh, the first quarter of 2021, 49% said Democratic, 40% said Republican. And then the great switch happened. It goes to 49 Democrat, 43 Republican. That's in the second quarter of 2021. Then we get a virtual tie in uh, the third quarter, 45 Democrat, 44 Republican. Now it's 47 Republican and 42 Democrat. So there is uh, an absolute flocking away from Joe Biden and the Democrats, and there is movement towards the Republicans. Um, now, let me give you some more information on this. Uh, this is, by the way, the actual numbers are from Gallup, but that's Axios reporting on the Gallup numbers. Uh, the polling found a huge shift in party preference over the course of 2021 from a, a nine-point Democratic advantage in the first quarter to a five-point Republican advantage in the fourth quarter. This is the biggest swing in one calendar year for Gallup's entire history of tracking this, which is about 30 years. Uh, in 2021, so the actual number of, um, I think, people who are registered with the respective parties, 29% Democratic, 27% uh, Republican, and then you have 42% who are independents. So independents are the largest block. Now, by the way, a lot of people misinterpret this and don't understand that just because you're independent doesn't mean you have like amorphous or apolitical or centrist political views. In fact, uh, it's divided about 50-50 within that block of uh, independents for right-leaning independence and left-leaning independence. And so you basically have independence that like caucus effectively with the Democrats or the Republicans. But this is the largest swing in the history of Gallup polling away from the Democrats and, and towards the Republicans. This is the Biden era. You know, every day I come out here and I get on my soapbox and I'm a broken record. And the one criticism of both me and this show that is totally accurate is that I'm a broken record. It's true. I am a broken record. Uh, and the reason I'm a broken record is because I didn't just wake up this morning and all the problems switched and now we have different problems. The problems still exist as they are. 30 million Americans don't have health care. Uh, you know, you have about 500,000 Americans who are homeless. You have about 80% of Americans who are living paycheck to paycheck. So I bring these same things up over and over because it's the reality of the situation that we have to deal with. So yes, guilty, broken record. But the fact of the matter is, Joe Biden facilitated this downfall. Why? Because he had an FDR-style mandate to govern, and he morphed into Ronald Reagan. In terms of the policies that actually got implemented, it's underwhelming to say the least. So when's the last time he did anything for the American people? I mean, probably the most straightforward answer to that question is the $1,400 checks that he sent. Now, even that was uh, disappointing because he said $2,000 over and over and over, and then he was Weasley and said, well, Trump already gave you $600, so I'll give you $1,400 to make a total of $2,000. But either way, the American people uh, gave Biden at the time a 57% approval rating because they said, okay, look, you're doing something for me. You're doing something for me. Just, you just cut me a check. Okay. High approval rating. Uh, the Democrats were holding their lead in terms of uh, people who identify with them in the country. And then as soon as Biden started to twiddle his thumbs and have these policies that he didn't really fight for or twist arms to get implemented, then came the downfall. Now, don't tell me, because the, the line you hear from mainstream media and from Democratic elites is, well, what do, you, what do you want him to do? It's not his fault. N nothing could have happened because you got Manchin, you got cinema, they're blocking it, and it is what it is. That is absolute garbage, because even if I grant you that point, which I don't, Joe Biden can sign executive orders, and there are plenty of executive orders that would be wonderful 
for the people of this country that he is refusing to sign. Whether it's legalizing marijuana, which he can do today, freeing all the nonviolent drug offenders, which he could do today, pardon Edward Snowden and Julian Assange, which he could do today, uh, eliminate student loan debt, which he could do today. He could do rolling student loan debt elimination, which is effectively free college, and he could do it today. He is choosing not to do it. He's choosing not to sign an executive order to give all Americans health care during this pandemic. He absolutely has the authority, the legal right to do that, because there's a, a provision of Obamacare that effectively says, hey, during an emergency, the government can pick up the tab for people's health care. He could do it. He's choosing not to do it. So he has nobody to blame but himself. And the corporate Democrats need to look in the mirror. It is absolutely their fault. Now, they'll turn around and blame the left. How can you blame the left? Our vision has not been implemented at all. Not by any stretch of the imagination. We're very clear about the things we want and the things we would fight for. And none of those things are being pursued at the moment. So, I, I don't know how anybody can blame the left. But understand something, guys. This was not set in stone. This didn't have to happen. This great exodus from people who are in the Democratic Party and aligned with the Democratic Party. It didn't have to happen. Again, broken record, but here we go. FDR was effectively a social democratic president. Now, of course, he did horrible things, many on social issues, Japanese internment, you name it. And I'm not downplaying that or saying, hey, let's embrace that. No. But when you look at the economic programs of FDR, the New Deal, for example, Americans got a tiny little taste of social democracy and they said, I want this. And they elected FDR four times. This was before we had term limits. In fact, term limits were a response to FDR, who couldn't stop winning, and the Republicans panicked and said, if we don't do term limits, we're never going to win. So Americans got a little taste of social democracy, and they said, yes, more of this. Elected four times. When FDR was in office, Democrats held 80% of the House and 80% of the Senate. This is what can happen and what should happen if you actually deliver for working people. You look out for them, they look out for you. But instead, you get in there, and you twiddle your thumbs, and you do nothing, and you say, Oh, what can I do? Joe Manchin's got me, and Kirsten Cinema's got me, and where's my stapler? I don't think I could get this done. And what happens? People are running away from you at a thousand miles an hour. And by the way, I agree with the Bernie Sanders point on this when he says, This isn't because the Republicans are, are liked. This isn't because they've done anything good. This isn't because they stand for anything substantive. No, it's that it's people feel crossed by the Democratic Party correctly, and so they're just running away. And some people will land in this apolitical nihilistic space, and some people will land in the, I guess I align more with the right space. That's the way it works. We have these pendulum elections time and time again. Oh, these people aren't doing anything for me, I'll go this way. Oh, these people aren't doing anything for me, I'll go this way. And the pendulum's just going to keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, with nobody delivering for the American people. And by the way, all the GOP has is culture war stuff. Because they are open about the fact, uh, I don't want to do voting rights, I don't want to help the American people out economically, I don't want to do anything on health care. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to virtue signal to align with people when it comes to the culture war. So, you know, they've... Effect in an era where there's a pandemic and a collapsing healthcare system and economic devastation, all they're talking about is like, don't you hate cancel culture? Doesn't wokeness suck? Well, at least we're against wokeness, and we don't want to call you racist and bigoted or anything like that. We want to welcome you with open arms. So come be with us. And the Democrats are the crazy ones, and look, they're not doing anything for you. So just come with us, and I'll virtue signal around social issues and uh, you'll support me, and then I'll proceed to do absolutely nothing. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. It wouldn't be that hard to move these numbers. Look, the polling just came in the other day. We talked about it on the show. Biden's uh, just had his lowest single uh, approval rating of his presidency, 33%. Did you know Donald Trump's lowest single approval rating was 34%? So Biden has now gone below Donald Trump, and that poll for Trump came out after January 6th. Do you know how disliked you have to be to get below that guy after January 6th? Do you understand that? I went through the, the history of it, too. Barack Obama's lowest single poll was 40%, a full seven points higher than Joe Biden's current number. Now, to be fair to Biden, uh, the actual average of polls, he's at 41%, but his lowest single one came out at 33%. The only modern presidents who were below Biden are the two Bushes. 
George W. Bush at his lowest was 25%, and George H.W. at his lowest was, I think, 29%. But even Bill Clinton at his lowest, 37%. Look, this is what you get. And then what did Biden, uh, what did uh, he do the other day? He came out and he said, uh, God's honest truth, I don't know if we're going to get this through. Well, I guess points for honesty on that one. But if you had any strategic ability, or if you had a pair of balls, you would have twisted arms. It's unbelievable what's going on. Even if I grant you, oh, you hit a legislative brick wall because of Mansion and Cinema, which I don't grant you because you don't know how to fight, you don't know how to get them to fall in line. You don't know how to give, do the character stick approach, play the mafia boss approach. Um, you still could do executive orders. Even if I grant you the whole, okay, whatever, you know, Congress is, is deadlocked, it's not going anywhere, there's nothing you can do to get these people on board. Again, I don't believe that. But even if I grant you that, break out that executive order pen right now. And he's not. And it's a joke. And now, at this very late date, um, we just got the news that finally they're doing uh, free testing. Now, there are caveats as to um, what makes it perhaps not as good as other ways they could have done it, but you could at least now get some free, I believe, the rapid tests. They just launched the website yesterday, and then now we just heard they're going to send out 400 million free N95 masks. So, now look, those are good things, but where would Biden's approval rating be if he did this uh, earlier in his time in office? if he did it within the first two or three months of his administration, where would his approval rating be? Or he did it, let's say, after he cut the $1,400 checks, you know, a month later, then you send it out. Now people are getting the sense, and not incorrectly, that this feels like it's too little too late. You know, Omicron is already surging across the country. We have, what, over 1,000 deaths a day. Uh, hospitals are jam-packed. And now, you say, at this late date, I don't want to be too harsh on this front because I want to incentivize more things like this. Okay, send out the tests, send out, send out the, uh, the masks, but you just get the sense they're always like two or three steps behind. And they're not governing in any sort of effective way. It's really pathetic. So you have this great exodus from the Democratic Party now, and the Republicans are, um, you know, the beneficiaries of that. And they're not, I mean, the Republicans might shatter a record in the sense that they win an election without ever talking about any policy. They're on track to do that. That party should be so easy to beat that it's laughable. It should be... It should be a joke. You should trounce them in every single election. But because you're so bad at delivering on core promises... I mean, guys, we're two years into a raging pandemic. We haven't even had a bill proposed, a standalone bill proposed, to give people paid sick leave. Every other country has paid sick leave. Certainly every other developed country has paid sick leave. You couldn't do a standalone bill on paid sick leave and do a full court press. And then even if it gets slapped down, then use that as a, a, a political hammer to hit the Republicans over the head with and to hit the obstructionist Democrats over the head with. Just the number of ways in which there's no strategy, there's no vision, there's, there are no goals... It's astounding. I mean, they got to the point with Build Back Better, it was $6 trillion or whatever, and then it was 3.5, and then it was 2.1, and now it's 1.8. And they're at the point where, I mean, Pelosi almost literally said it the other day. Look, just have Mansion and Cinema write whatever bill they want, and then we'll fucking pass it. Look at that. Look at how weak and pathetic and sad that is, and, and they're still not giving anything in terms of what they want to pass, because they don't want to pass anything, because they're massively corrupt. Now, either you threaten them with uh, you know, litigation, you threaten them with prosecution, you say, look, Merrick Garland's gonna go after you, we know the crimes you committed, Manchin, I see what your daughter's done, she's price fixing and, and price gouging for, for pharma meds, we're not gonna let that stand, you might end up behind bars, unless, hey, maybe I look out for you, if you look out for me, if you vote for my agenda, you become a hero, and we build a statue to you, and you can get a position in my administration, or somebody in your family can get a position in my administration, or whatever. Give you extra infrastructure money for West Virginia. Uh, give you another military base. Anything. If you play ball, you're a hero. If you don't, you're public enemy number one and I will ruin your career. And more than that, your life. He doesn't have it in him. He's not LBJ. He's not FDR. And I don't think he really cares that much. I mean, his governing philosophy probably is more in agreement with Mansion and Cinema. So the idea of Mansion and Cinema writing a bill and him signing it, he probably likes more than Bernie Sanders writing a bill and him signing it. So he sort of let them have free reign and 
these are the effects of that. He couldn't even get voting rights passed. Couldn't even get voting rights passed. And they were talking about an exception to the filibuster. That's one issue, voting rights. When Republicans wanted to get their Supreme Court pick appointed, they just said, we're done with the filibuster for Supreme Court picks. The Democrats, any piece of their agenda, any piece of their, you know, uh, Build Back Better legislation, they're like, we're not going to do any exemptions to the filibuster, we're not going to go back to the talking filibuster, we're not going to abolish the filibuster, nothing. We're just going to sit here and twiddle our thumbs and get blown out in the election, like the cucks we are. Well, there you have it. They earned this. You built that, Joe Biden and corporate Democrats. You built this. They will find a way to blame the left. They're already blaming the left. And you be you better be here to knuckle up and fight back because uh, we cannot let that narrative yet again be hijacked. It is crystal clear whose fault this is. The so-called centrist Democrats, the corporate Democrats have been in control this entire time. This is their governing philosophy in action. Now it's time for them to own it. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.